Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa coming to you live from the Top Drawer RVA, where we have another Wednesday project. I'm live every Wednesday over here on the Dixie Belle paint page at 3 p.m. EST to sit on the floor and play with paint and talk about lots of fun and exciting things. So welcome, I hope you're having a great day. I am going to jump right in because I have a lot of stuff I wanna to do today and I wanna take you with me. And whatever I don't finish up over here on this page, I will either finish over on my own Facebook page, which is the Top Drawer RVA. I have linked it above my head, and if I don't finish it over there, I'll hold on to it till next week, and we can come back and finish it together. So I have a gorgeous vintage tall boy sitting here um, that I bought specifically for painting on the Dixie Bell paint page, like I usually do. <laughs> so this beautiful beast has been cleaned with white lightning. Um, white lightning is always my, my number one go-to step. I put it here on the floor, just in case anybody has never seen it before. Okay, so you've got your beautiful white lightning in here. It's a nice little powder. I disperse it into a spray misting bottle filled with water and I clean my piece. So once my piece is cleaned, I am ready to do minor repairs. Well, how do I do minor repairs? All right, well, let me show you. So when I'm talking about minor repairs, I'm talking about tiny little veneer issues. Sometimes these older pieces have had a lot of wear and tear and they really need to um, be touched up. And, and honestly, this piece was in pretty good shape except for one foot, which I'll show you later on when we work on it. Um, and I use my Dixie Bell's mud. Dixie Bell mud is a mix that you use on small veneer issues that you want to repair. Okay, things like um, missing pieces, chip pieces. If I wanted to fill these holes and add new hardware, I would use it here. And that's what I did on this little spot right here that you're seeing. Then after my Dixie Bell mud has been dried and sanded back, I came in with my boss. And what is boss? Well, boss is your primer for anything that you think might have a little bit of bleed through. Um, it's gonna help your paint kind of adhere a little bit better and it takes away old funky smells. Now this guy didn't smell too bad for a change, sometimes they're pretty stinky. Um, but I knew that as I was cleaning it and cleaning it and cleaning it, I kept getting like a, a red kind of a tone on my paper towels, which tells me those tannins are coming out. Even though it's clean, I was still getting that on my paper towel. Well, that tells me I better put some boss on there. So this is boss and clear. I know it looks white here over in this little, this little bottle, um, but it's not, it's clear. You shake it well and you apply it to your surface. And once it's dry, you're then ready to start to paint on your piece. So that was my prep for this piece. White lightning, mud, and boss. Usually, <laughs> those are the same three things I do on every piece, but I always wanna start off the video letting you know that there is some behind the scenes work that you don't get to see, and then this is taken care of, okay? So what else are we gonna do today? Well, besides painting, I'm going to stick some woodie bends on here. Would you bends or moldings for your furniture? I don't know if you've seen them before or not, but I use them a lot. They're jewelry, basically. And what I have here are two little tiny would you bends. This is would you bend number 990, available on the Dixie Bell paint page. Which, if you're looking for them, you can click that little link above my head, and when you get to tools and you hit tools, you're gonna see would you bend, you can scroll down and find your little keyhole. So when I looked at this tall boy, I took off the hardware, I'm gonna be painting it and putting it back on. Um, I felt like it was a little bit naked over here. We're gonna be doing some fun stencils, we're gonna be doing an ombre blend of paint, but I feel like this really needed some spice. So let's spice it up a little bit. Let's add some really cute little woodie bends, okay? So I opened my drawer, normally I would do this in the floor, but then I'm gonna be up and down, and that would be crazy. I'm gonna put them in here in my drawer, I'm gonna use my heat gun, and I'm going to heat them up. I heat them up because even though this looks flat as it sits right here, it might not truly be flat. This might not truly be flat. I wanna make sure it's gonna get as flat as possible. So let's heat this up with my hot hair, hot air gun. I always called it a hot hair gun. <laughs> my hot air gun, my heat gun. We're gonna heat it up for a quick minute. Once it's warm, you can find that your woodie bend moldings become bendable, they become pliable. You can move them around a little bit. These are pretty tiny little guys. You probably didn't need to do this step, but I like to do this step. So now you can see it becomes bendy and moving. Okay, it goes from a hard surface to a kind of like a, a bendy curve, if you'd like. I'm gonna take my wood glue because you're always gonna apply your wood you bend moldings with glue. You might you wanna use wood glue, okay? If you don't have any, they also do have this on the Dixie Bell paint page. I put on about that much. It's not a ton. It's not a ton of wood glue, but it's enough to get it on here, okay? So I'm gonna look. There's actually a little tiny line which is gonna help me center this perfectly, and I'm going to stick it 
right on the front of my piece. So cute, so cute. Okay, so now that it's stuck on there, I wanna heat it again. This way, I'm knocking all the stuff on the floor over. This way I'm uh, ensuring that it's directly flat to the surface. This also gives the glue kind of an extra little kick so that it can be drying a little quicker because as soon as you put it on here, you're good to go and you can start to paint right over top of it. So let's heat up number two and do the same thing because I'm gonna line them up and make sure they're even steaming on the front of my piece. Okay, now that that's been heated up, I'm gonna put my gun over there because I'm afraid of hot things. I think I've mentioned before, heat guns and irons always scare me. <laughs> so I throw them far away so that I don't touch them and burn myself, especially while I'm on live camera because hello, so embarrassing. Okay, so I've smoothed that glue around, okay? I'm gonna stick it directly underneath the other one in the middle. I'm gonna kind of push my head back a little bit just to double check that they are even. That one needs to come over a tiny bit more. Okay, so once it's on there, oh, I gotta heat it again, so let me grab that gun. I'm gonna heat it again just to make sure that's flat. And I'm gonna put this gun down again. So now that I know my wood you bend is on there and it's safe and secure, you don't need to tape it, you really don't. It's gonna stick and it's gonna stay there. But I like to just really ensure that it's gonna stay where I put it so I like to stick a piece of tape on there. So I'm just gonna stick a little piece of tape just to hold it while we get our job done today. Good, good, perfect. So this glue is done, let's move this out of the way and let's move along. So now we can start to paint, but before we start to paint, I thought I would show you the plan for this piece, okay? So I did a piece very similar to this about three years ago and it was a beautiful tall boy, more leggy than this, but super similar. And I used a gorgeous blend, okay? So what I did was I started at the base with Gravel Road, which is kind of a really pretty brownish color, okay? So when we're gonna start at the base with Gravel Road, we're gonna come up into Vintage Duck Egg, which is this beautiful, really pretty greeny blue color, okay? Then the majority of the piece is going to be sea glass. Sea glass and, and Vintage Duck Egg are very, very close, okay? They're very, very similar um, in color and tone. So in order to kind of separate that, I haven't decided yet if we're going to go ombre dark all the way up, which I kind of think so, but I might want to lighten the centers of these drawers a little bit. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to be using buttercream. Buttercream is really pretty and it's kind of a nice creamy mid-tone that's wonderful for blending. Yeah, I mean, this is a good one for blending. I use this a lot with many different colors and it always looks good. Have you tried this before? I never thought that I would like a creamy color and I do really like in this one. So that is the plan for this piece. Um, what else are we gonna do with this piece? Well, I have a little surprise in this drawer. Who wants to see a surprise? Y'all wanna see a surprise? I will be adding dun, 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 gilding wax. Today, you can contact your premier Dixie Bell retailer and find out when they're gonna be carrying this because this is the tiny new can of gilding wax. How cute is that? Oh my gosh, it's adorable. It's so tiny, it's so cute. It comes in a beautiful amount of colors. I believe there's six, and there's also going to be three chameleon waxes, okay? Chameleon waxes are gonna be a little bit more iridescent. The gilding wax is a highly pigmented gilding wax. They are all oil-based products, and I need you to check for your local premier retailer to find out where they're gonna be having this, okay? So they can start to order today, and that is big news because I am a big gilding wax fan. Big one, big fan. So that is hiding in the drawer over here because that's gonna go on there too. Well, what else are we gonna do this piece? We well, see these gorgeous corners. I wanna accent these really pretty corners. And the way that I'm gonna accent these corners is to show you another surprise. It's a surprise kind of a day. I'm so excited. Today, if you hadn't noticed, you can go to the Dixie Bell website and get a brand new product. A brand new product. Dixie Bell is carrying silk, screen stencils available today on the Dixie Bell webpage. So you have to go check it out. This is the roses from the, the floral design. Can you see how beautiful and sharp that detail is? Look at that detail, crazy good. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek right now of some gorgeous stencils. 
so that you can learn all about stencils because we're going to do some on here if we can get it dry enough okay so the one I just showed you was actually off of this page you can tell with the little gold digger kind of outline I've already washed it and put it back on here each package of stencils okay is going to come in a cute little pack like this and you're gonna get three in there you're gonna get three stencils in one package which is nuts it's nuts and you see this little white thing right down here in the bottom that is your applicator tool you can use this to drag your paint across and put it in your stencil I actually just used a foam applicator and I really like the way that it worked too so you have a couple options when you're using your silk screen stencils dun 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 new products it's so exciting so let me give you a sneak peek so this is the floral like I said each one has three designs inside of it that's the floral and that is what I used on the drawer that I showed you what else I'm going to use on here is possibly because there's so many of them this one so the mosaic has these beautiful shapes see this gorgeous design this is part of the new bells and whistles line that Dixie Bell is just gonna have all of the things for all of the people it's amazing amazing um, and I'm gonna take these little guys and we're gonna put them in the corners you see how they're kind of triangle shaped I'm gonna line them up and somehow do something in the corners because there's a bunch on there so this is the back of that design this is the mosaic which we're gonna probably use today if I can get it dry enough there's a mandala okay this one also has three designs inside crazy good there is a western boho with a dream catcher I know you all love the dream catcher so pretty right look at all those designs in there there's patterns there's flowers there's botanicals there's nautical all of these are available right now on the Dixie Bell paint page so go check them out you get three in one pack they're reusable up to 10 times each I think you could probably get more uses out of them I've washed mine with water warm water and a little bit of soap laid it flat to dry and then put it back on that reverse kind of white paper which helps it stay sticky and reused it again I've had amazing luck with it and I love it I love new things <laughs> so give them a try check it out so we're gonna do this little ombre blend we're gonna do some stencils and we're gonna now go to the bottom down here I'm gonna move all of my paint before I have to get up down up down and we're gonna work on some gel stained feet what do you say today's the day and there's also a new brush on the Dixie Belle paint page you have to go check it out it's called the Scarlet it's red it's so cute it's a palm kind of a brush I haven't got it yet I ordered today I'm not gonna tell you how many I ordered but I ordered I was shopping <laughs> and it's gonna be here soon and I'll show you all about it because it's adorable um, it has red bristles it's synthetic it's a smooth brush looks amazing for blending and fine detail and maybe some glaze but go check that out too the new Scarlet brush because y'all new things make me happy all right let's go down here work on some feet shall we actually today Linda you can get your stencils and your brand new scarlet brush online you can go right ahead and order it there or you can find your local retailer um, but they would have had to order it today as well today's the first day those are out the gilding waxes I spoke of are only available through your premier retailer right now okay um, they will be available to everybody by the end of the month um, but as it sits right now you do have to contact your local premier Dixie Bell retailer and they will have that for you but stencils and the brand new um, scarlet brush shop right now go ahead and click that link get shopping because I was early <laughs> early today all right let's move the camera and shift you down so you can see the feet on this beautiful piece see these scrolly pretty feet down here let's see if my mic is gonna reach all the way over here dun, dun, dun. there we are bring it down a little lower sorry for the shakes the shakes rattling rolling over here okay so I have done a minor repair with some missing wood on this foot with Dixie Belle's mud to kind of like faux finish it and fix it because it wasn't okay it really needed to be built up because it was missing a part next I'm going to prepare my wheels wheels like this these old wheels that you're seeing down here are actually made from wood because this is a vintage dresser that is pretty old I'm gonna say that this is probably over 100 years old the wheels really need a drink <laughs> they really need some moisture because these old wood wheels are gonna crack if they get really dry so this is my recommendation for old wood 
This also goes on every single dresser that has wood on wood glides like this guy. Um, I did that as well. This is the Dixie Bell's Big Mama's Butter. And I wish you all had a scratch and sniff option because yum, so good, it's so good. Um, this is gonna go on. I just take an old brush that I keep exactly just for my Big Mama's Butter. And what I would do is condition all four wood wheels. So when you're conditioning these wood wheels with your Big Mama's Butter, you're giving them that moisture back that they're missing. They haven't had that moisture in a very long time and they need it. Otherwise they will crack if somebody tries to roll this dresser. You need to know that proper prep saves the day. Besides the fact that it's gonna make your pieces smell delish, um, this is really gonna help your drawers glide easily as well when you make sure that you are adding it to all of your drawer glides, all right? All right, let's get to work. That was a lot of talking, but I had a lot of fun stuff to share because, hello, who doesn't wanna learn about new silkscreen stencils? I mean, obsessed, totally obsessed. <laughs> so let's come down here and work on this right now. So these feet, I think what I'm gonna do, the plan for this foot is to stain these front two feet, okay? I want them dark and I wanna keep them separate than the piece. I like that look of having these finished in a different manner than the rest. I could also stain the very, very, very top, but I haven't gotten that far yet and I haven't decided that far yet. So we will see. The brush will be under um, new, new releases. Look up new releases, sign into your account, Catherine, and check out the new releases. It'll be there in that section. It's called the Scarlet, okay? So in order to apply your gel stain in espresso, onto your piece, you're gonna need some sort of applicator pad. I buy these by the dozen. This is a Dixie Belle applicator pad. Love these. Two of them come in one pack. They're soft, they're squishy. You can cut them in half if you want and use half on one and half on the other. I use them all the time. What else do I like to do? Well, I also like to use a rubber glove because gel sting gets in your fingernails. I mean, I know I'm already, hello, Band-Aid. Not that fancy, <laughs> but I'd like to not have my hands covered in gel stain all the time. You know, eventually people need to think that I can clean up a, you know, somewhat nice. So let's stain this. Why do I love gel stain? Because it goes right over existing finishes. So you're seeing this old wood foot right here, okay? I've conditioned the little base wheels with some Big Mama's butter, and I'm, I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna go all the way around the bottom. If you felt the need to tape these off, you could. I'm not gonna tape it, I'm gonna wing it, okay? I'm gonna dip into my no pain gel stain in espresso and I'm going to wipe directly over top of all the repairs that I did with my Dixie Bells mud and I'm going to do this whole foot and I'm gonna have to like stick my head down here to make sure that I get it all the way around. So bear with me. So I'm wiping it on. This is just a round leg. I'm not worried like if it was the top of a dresser I would be really taking care to go in the direction of the wood grain because this is just a wood foot and this is the only part that I'm staining. I'm just gonna apply my gel stain in any what manner and just cover that existing wood finish. It's as easy as that. Gel stain just wipes on. You can seal it with a clear coat or you don't have to seal it at all. It's entirely up to you. Can you see how cute that foot looks now? So this is the original color and I can see a little Big Mama's Butter on there. Whoops, we'll get that off. So this is the original color up here and this is the Espresso Gel Stain. One or two coats is up to you. I feel like I kinda wanna see a little bit of the wood underneath, so I'm gonna leave it um, as one, one coat. One coat's gonna be a tiny bit thinner than two and you're still gonna see that pretty wood grain underneath. So let's do this one over here, okay? Again, with the same applicator pad, just wiping it on, it, it just refreshes everything. You know, like there's something really pretty about leaving a little bit of natural wood on these old pieces. I don't know, it makes them feel just that little bit more fancy pants, I guess is what I wanna say. I just like to see a little bit of that wood. So by adding the gel stain, I'm refreshing, I'm changing the color to like a little bit more of a modern color and it's as easy as that. What do you think? Have you used gel stain before? So easy, right? So these little applicator pads are amazing because 
you don't have to put a ton on there. You just kind of have to put it on where you can rub it in and you get this really pretty finish. It's going to keep a nice little shine like you're seeing down here and it's going to look rich and dark and amazing over top of what we're going to do next. All right, so let's move along. Let's find a place for this little applicator pad, which hopefully is not underneath me. <laughs> I'm going to move it out of the way. So who's going to shop today for some stencils and a fancy new brush? I bet you there's a bunch of you that are going to because I'm super excited. I'm actually going to work on this section, try and get it done, and then um, see if we can maybe even dry it with heat gun and show you how these stencils work because they're so cool. So cool. All right, let's do it. So there you go. Gel stain espresso on the two front legs. The back legs are separate. They're straight. They're not curvy. They're not pretty. I'm going to leave them like this, okay? So remember, this base has been painted in Boss. Boss and Clear is on here. Boss and Clear is my prep for this project. We're going to start with the darkest color. We're going to start with Gravel Road, which I know is a bold choice for this piece, but brown and blue always goes really well together. Um, and this is just going to be really just right here at the base as a kind of like a blend from the espresso up into the blues. So let's get at it, shall we? Taking on my glasses so I can see my paint. Okay, on the floor I have a bunch of brushes, medium flats and one round large. You can use whatever makes your little heart happy. Brushes are personal preference and uh, I just happen to love my medium. My brushes have been cleaned today so this is already dampened, but you like to work with a nice damp brush by using your spray misting bottle and FYI, these are in stock right now too. If you're shopping, put one of these in your list because they were out of stock for a really long time. <laughs> I'm excited, I got one of these today too. All right, so let's take this beautiful brownish gray gravel road. All of this detail is gonna get painted over. And then once it's dry, we're going to be adding the new gold gilding wax. We're gonna be adding gemstone mousse and golden gem then we're going to really fancy pants this little dresser up it's going to have a whole new lease on life which is kind of like why i do this y'all i really really like to feel accomplished i get a, a really good feeling of satisfaction when I bring back these pieces that somebody says, oh, it was my grandma's and I don't want it anymore. It doesn't fit my style. Or, oh, I, this has been in the house forever, but it, I don't like it, so I was gonna throw it in the garbage. Don't throw it in the garbage, give it to me and we'll paint it. And we're gonna have some serious fun with this because I love rescuing old things. I like old things. I like old books for staging. I like old vintage like silver that old tarnished, I don't even clean it up. I like it old and tarnished looking. It just looks, I don't know, better to me. It's making me want to go shopping at the thrift store. <laughs> All right, so let's take this gravel road and bring it up. I'm not gonna paint the sides right now because this piece is very deep. And if I turn this, I'm going to lose my camera angle. So today for camera sake, we're going to work on the front only but know that the sides will be painted in the same, the same manner, okay? And yes, I'm painting with my drawers in because I'm doing an ombre kind of graduated effect um, and I want it to be matching. If I take my drawers out and paint them when they're out, I'm gonna lose that blend. Okay, so this is Gravel Road, kind of a sneakily good color. Do you not love that? Like, I feel like this is a color that doesn't get a lot of hype out there. And it kind of should because it looks super classy, super nice, super classy piece. All right. So next we're going to move into vintage duck egg. And I have just a tiny bit of my last old bottle to use before I open my brand spake new one. So you see me using this. It's vintage duck egg. I'm going to dump it out onto a paper plate and we're going to lay it down for the next color. Okay. Come on. It's stuck in there. Okay, so question to you, should I bring the gravel road like up to here and then do it again on this piece? Like so that each panel kind of becomes a ombre effect into the middle or should I just keep going and bring my 
vintage duck egg, my sea glass, and then end in sea glass all the way up. I'm asking your opinion. I always find that there's something that you guys can help me with, and this is it. Be my, be my eyes. Let me know what you think. So I'm not going to ombre these colors together yet. I'm just going to lay them where they're going to live on this dresser. Maybe as I paint this, I'll decide. <laughs> I'll change my mind as I go along. I'll decide what I want to do. I have to take the lid off. This paint is getting a little bit old. Don't be afraid when your paint gets a little crunchy and old. Like this is kind of the last of the last in here. You can use your water on your brush and, and rescue it. It's going to keep coming back. You can get a lot of use out of that paint that you think is kind of chunky and old on the bottom. And sometimes I save my cans with the chunky and old paint just for textured and delicious pieces that I do with like a lot of boho texture. I do that as well. Okay, so here's what I mean. See this vintage duck egg in this really pretty gravel road? Do I bring the gravel road up here and make it like a section so I'm painting brown into blue? Or do I just do vintage duck egg and then the rest sea glass? What do you think? I should just do gravel road on the bottom, I see another person saying just on the bottom, just on the bottom. Okay, we'll leave it just on the bottom. You're the boss. Advice taken. Let's move along. So I'm going to paint this little applique. This is actually original to the piece. I didn't add this. This is on here. It's fabulous and I love it. I find that when I'm painting moldings, I, um, I do a lot of wet paint because I want to get it really into all these little marks, these little crevices. It just helps you. It's the same as like the wood you bends. Helps you get your, your paint into all those little cracks. But this little guy right here is going to be all gemstone mousse and it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be so good. Okay, so let's bring the vintage duck egg up. Puppy dog hairs. I'm taking your advice. I heard you all. You all said just leave it the gravel road at the bottom. Remember, my hardware is going to be gold as well, okay? Because all the gold accents are going to be on here. Gold trim, gold gilding wax, gold accents. It's going to be super yum. Okay. So now I've got my gilding wax. Or my gilding wax. What? I've got gilding wax in the brain. My vintage duck egg about halfway up the piece. But not gonna, I should move my mic up a little bit more. I'm gonna make you guys hear my arm rustle against my shirt. It's kind of hard to paint sometimes when I'm painting just to show you exactly what I'm doing versus painting for painting's sake. Okay, so there you go. Gravel road and coming up into beautiful vintage duck kick. Now I have another brush and I have my beautiful sea glass. Here's the deal. When sea glass is wet and vintage duck egg is wet, they look very, very close. Very, very close. Um, you're not really going to see much of a difference, but when it dries, sea glass is just a tiny bit lighter in color. So I'm going to take another brush, another flat medium, I'm going to spray it with water. This is just going to help me get my paint to go a little further, number one, and also minimize my brush strokes. Let's see, you have fiber in your paint. I don't have fiber in my paint. I got dog hairs. I have two big old dogs that just like, they think that if I sit on the floor, I'm their pillow. So I get a lot of dog hair over here, plus dust, plus sanding junk. Like it's not a very clean environment. I'm definitely not being very, uh, <laughs> very clean over here. We're usually very messy, but that's okay. I like being messy. It means I'm being busy, right? If you're not messy, you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> All right, so now you can see these two colors, how they go together. Let's pull out this drawer a tiny bit just to make sure I'm going to get the edge all the way around. And I will pull out the bottom drawers as well before they all dry on me. I don't want that to happen. Let's add 
this beautiful sea glass. I mean, ideally, I wouldn't be doing this on camera. I'd be sitting down and on my little stool and getting all over the place. But for video sake, it is what it is. Okay, let's go up here and finish this lip. So for today's sake of painting live, I think I'm going to stop in this section. If I continue up and work on that section, I'm not gonna get the chance to get it done and dry enough so that I can show you the um, silk screen stencils that I wanna do on the hardware. So we're gonna work with this. All right, sound like a plan? Sounds good to me. Let's work on this little spot and get it blendy blended together so that it looks fabulous. Okay, so then know that this color, this sea glass is gonna continue all the way up this piece. What do we think? Do we like this so far? Shut my glasses back on, see what everybody's saying. Let's see, oh, sea glass is your favorite. It's one of my favorites too. Let's see, put you down a tiny bit more. Now you can kind of see how in my head, the color of this espresso gel stain on the feet pulls up and makes it an easier, I don't know, transition. Because if I would have went, which is totally fine, the brown legs to blue, I just feel like I like to, I like to do this a little bit a different way. It just works a little bit better. Thank you, Anna, thank you. Okay, so now, know that the sides will be painted the same. Let's work on the second coats of what we were doing over here. Got a little of sea glass on my gravel road. So we're gonna take gravel road and I'm gonna do my second coat. Gravel road doesn't need a lot of paint, y'all. Gravel road is kind of, it's one of those colors like to call them my one coat wonders. They always go on and look so good. You really don't need a ton. It just goes on and makes a beautiful, rich color, covering all your exposed wood without having to do like a full two coats. So what I will also do is after I'm off camera, get up in under this lip, Make sure that all my under parts are painted. Um, you don't want to forget your, your undercarriage. You want to paint that part too, okay? So let's go now into the vintage duck egg. Let's deposit. It's going to need a second coat. I can see spots where the color is not um, even. It's not as even as it should be. It's a little bit more transparent. So I'm just going to lay down this color. Definitely see me use a lot more water on my second coats. Okay, because when I have my second coat, I want to eliminate those brush strokes. And by using a wet, damp brush, you're going to be able to do that. My vintage duck egg didn't go very far. I thought I had more in that jar. I might have to open up my new container. Again, painting right over that molding. and getting it up in all of these little cracks. Okay, so let's decide. Now, am I going to bring my vintage duck egg down into my gravel road, or am I going to bring the gravel road up into my vintage duck egg? I'm gonna go back to my gravel road. I'm also gonna take out some paper towel on the floor here, and you're gonna see me blotting off my brush with um, removing more paint. Like, I don't want a lot of paint on my brush for this, so I just blot it off. This way my brush has still got the original color, but it's not saturated in paint, if you understand what I mean. Now, to pull two colors together, you keep your two separate brushes, you decide where you wanna go. I could use this brush and bring this color up, I could bring my vintage duck egg down. I just wanna kinda of start to see how these edges are gonna to go together. Let's play with it a little bit and see what happens. 
again, not depositing any more color on this brush. I just want to see how we're going to work it. Vintage duck egg, blotting it off on paper towel, spraying it with water. Let's see what happens with this line. It seems an unlikely combination, brown and blue, but it's not. It looks super good. And remember, I'm, I'm kind of mimicking a design that I had on another piece from a couple years ago that I did a very similar look to. So right now I'm just mostly blending these two colors with my vintage duck egg brush. I'm gonna blot it off again on my paper towel and I'm gonna actually put a little bit more vintage duck egg back on my brush. Not a ton, just a little. Okay, so I want to keep them very balanced. I see that this side is needing a little bit more vintage duck egg. I'm just gonna add a little bit more pigment to my brush. And you can see I'm also not spraying my piece of furniture because I don't want runs. I don't want it to run down and ruin the hard work that I'm doing. I just want to keep my brush damp enough that I'm able to pull the color. You can go back and forth, up and down, whatever tickles your fancy, it's totally up to you. I have to face it to me, sorry you guys, I need to just see what I'm doing here. Okay. So, now I'm going to add more vintage duck egg to my brush because I want to kind of true up this color in the middle. It got a little muddy for what I wanted by adding a touch of that color here, I can bring it back. Now I'm going to go back to my gravel road brush. We're going to soften those edges a little bit more. This is a lot of back and forth. If you felt like you can't get the look that you want because your brushes are, there's too much on there, you can stop, wash your brushes, start over. It's never gonna happen to me because I'm way too impatient. Um, I like to, mash it around <laughs> and get it where I want to go. If I stop and wash my brushes now, I'm going to lose all my mojo. But you can, if you feel like it's getting to be too much. Because these two colors are not very close on the color wheel, right? They're kind of far apart. So that means that they're going to be harder to blend and get the exact blend you're looking for. There's going to be a little bit more work involved but that's okay. Okay, so this is good. Back to my dark, which is my gravel road. Fixing this line up right here. And this is where I will stop because if you overwork it, it's gonna get to get crazy in here. So let me show you what I've done. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see comments, which I always lose. I need to wear them like on a string around my neck like a little old lady. <laughs> so grab a road of sea glass is not gonna be easier because sea glass is actually a little bit lighter even. Um, it's a little lighter than the, the vintage duck egg. So let's pretend you're not gonna look at this, okay? I'm not doing these little corner pieces because they go all the way around. So I actually will have to blend these corner pieces on their own. 
concentrate on what I've done to the drawers in this bottom piece because this is the blend that I'm looking for right here. What do you think? Pretty pretty, right? It looks nice and classy. It is hard to tell when stuff is wet, especially in the vintage duck egg colors, um, because it gets a little, uh, a little hard to see. When they're wet, they're different colors than when they're dry. Shake this would help, huh? Let's shake my paint first. It's always helpful. Let's fix the next line up. Let's do our vintage duck egg and our sea glass. Let's make that happen. Now I'm opening up my new vintage duck egg because the other one is getting kind of contaminated with grossness. So I'm just gonna refresh this little line up here. Because remember we brought this vintage duck egg up. This piece is so big, y'all. I'm used, I'm spoiled. I'm used to working on tiny tables. I'm showing you guys like a whole thing on tiny tables. And this is tall. It's a big piece. Okay, so now I'm gonna add my sea glass. I should dampen my brush before. Keep it, keep it wet. Okay. This is gonna be a way easier blend. So easy because they are going to be super close on the color wheel. Obviously very, very similar in shade. Vintage duck egg, sea glasses are like the exact same color basically. It's just a tone, a slight tone. So that is all you need to do for that. That's not a lot, right? That is not a lot. Voila, what do we think? So let's pretend that the sea glass travels all the way up to the top of this piece, which I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna stain the very, very top or if I'm gonna paint it. I kinda wanna paint it because I just want these feet to be a focal point. But I'm gonna dry this section over here and we're gonna um, play with some stencils, shall we? Who wants to play with the new silkscreen stencils? I do. I do. I'm just spraying my brushes so they stay wet. Let's put some lids on over here so we don't knock everything over. That would be helpful. And let me grab my heat gun so that I can get this section a little bit more dry so we can um, play with some stencils. What do you say? Well, that is happening. I will read comments and see what's going on. All right, cool, let's do it. So normally you would wait for this to be dry, but uh, yeah. I just rush, I rush, 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 and I want to show you all of the things. So I'm going to dry this section of paint, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use you know, the new silk screen stencils. So these four, actually six, these bottom six hardwares are going to be um, knobs that are painted in a shiny gold. I am going to spray paint my hardware because I have vintage hardware that's going back up on the four top holes, but the bottom will have um, new hardware that I'm gonna spray paint it all together to match. Okay, while this is drying, let's play with some mousse on here so that you can see how cute that's gonna be because I'm gonna paint it in the new gemstone mousse. Have you tried the new gemstone mousse yet? This is called Golden Gem. Golden Gem is pigmented and beautiful and I like to apply it with a small brush. So I'm gonna pick a brush over here that's tiny. It's going to help me paint this edge. I'm gonna use the opposite end of the brush because you're going to need to stir your gemstone mousse. Gemstone mousse is a water soluble product. It needs to be whipped. It needs to be stirred up, delicious and good. And once it is whipped and stirred, you're able to use it for a highly pigmented area. Check it out, look at that. Gemstone mousse is by far in the top 10 for favorite products of mine. So we'll just give this a few more minutes to get dry and we will paint a little bit of gemstone mousse on here so that you can see how it's gonna look because this is gonna be completely gemstone mousse. I might even go up here and do those keyholes afterwards. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So this is just a regular paintbrush. I actually like to damp my paintbrush even with the gemstone mousse because it is a water-based product. It just helps it go on that little bit smoother. You can see it when you dip in there. Look at that, like pudding. So good, right? So good. So this is gonna go on this entire little 
scroll piece that's on the front. Look at the pigment. You guys, so good. Such a little bit of gemstone mousse goes a very, very long way. It will dry on its own. You do have the ability to seal it. You can use your clear coats. I have actually been leaving it on my hardware and not sealing it at all. But once this is dry, you can seal it easy peasy. Just make sure that it is 100% dry and that your swipe of your clear coat is gonna go directly over, kind of like a one swipe. You don't want to do many, many, many swipes of clear coat because you kind of will reactivate that mousse. It is a water-based product and you wanna keep it where it's looking smoking hot on all the details, right? So good. So this is the new gemstone mousse. It is a water-based product. The new gilding wax are definitely a different beast. They are oil-based and they have the same amount of like high shine pigment, but you kind of just rub them on with a small brush or your finger. They're great for super detailed work where you want to have a pop of some shine and you're really going to like it too. I haven't, um, I haven't had any problems with that either. It dries lickety split quick. What do we think? So pretty, right? So pretty. Okay. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Are you dry enough? <laughs> Don't judge me if I do this too soon and I actually have to come back in and fix if my silk screen stencil happens to pull off um, some paint because you really should wait until your paint is completely dry before you're doing this step. But I want to show you because I'm excited. All right, let's bring you in nice and close so that everybody can see what I'm doing. Let's pick a beautiful stencil off the floor. We have this gorgeous one called Mosaic, which has like all these little flourishes on there, little corners, cute little things. Maybe I'll use one of these. What do you think? Sound like a plan? So inside of each silk screen stencil package, you're getting three in here. Come on. I've actually had these ones out and put them back in, so they're a little bit stuck. There we go. So you have three sheets in each package. These three sheets can be washed and reused, washed and reused. What should I do? Should I do a scrolly bit like right over top of there? How big is it? Hmm. <laughs> what do I want to do today? So many options. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, I like this one. Want to do this one? That one looks really good. Okay. So each package that you purchase in your stencils is going to come with a tiny tool. This little tool can be scraped across your stencil, whereas you're going through this silk screen and onto your piece. You can also use an applicator pad, which I did the other day, and it worked equally the same. Okay. How close are we getting in closer? I want you to not miss a ticket of this. You need to see all of the stuff. Okay. All right, so this is a silk screen stencil. Silk screen stencils are sticky on the back. See this? See how you can see through the stencil? It's really cool, okay? So when you peel it back, this side is sticky, this side is not. You're going to want to position it onto your piece and then it's gonna stay there. If you felt like you wanted to cut this out, you can do that. You could totally cut this out and use it on the corner. Um, I don't, I don't think I'm going to cut mine out. I think I'm just going to leave it on the sheet, but I know you can. So what should we do? Should we cut it out or pull the whole thing? Let's cut it out. Why not cut it out? If I have scissors, that's the magic number right here. Oh, we got scissors. Let's cut it out. So I'm going to cut it out this way. My silk screen stencil is going to stay really super sticky on this original sheet. Cause I'm not using these guys right now. I'm just using this little guy. Okay. So I've now cut out my silk screen stencil from one of the sheets of the new mosaic package of silk screens, okay? I'm gonna put the other piece down and I'm gonna show you what happens. So now you're gonna peel the edge, okay? You peel the edge, see that? Off. Keep this because when you wash your silk screen stencil, because you can use this one little piece up to 10 times, you can stick it back on the white piece and that white backing is going to help your stencil stay sticky. Okay, so now, there you go. Now you can see it on there. See it? See it on there? 
I'm going to use Moonshine Metallics and Gold Digger and I'm going to put it onto a little plate. So your tools can be either the tool that comes in the package as a dip in your paint and pull across because this is the silk screen. Where the silk screen is blue is what you're seeing underneath. This is where your, your paint will stay. I'm going to use my foam applicator only because I used it this way the other day and it worked well and this is what I'm used to. So you have a couple different options of how you're gonna apply it. Once again, this is Gold Digger. What I did learn from using them the other day is less is more, okay? I am going to just rub the Gold Digger onto the silk wherever I see blue because this is where your paint is going to go through and stick, okay? Tiny, tiny bits. I'm not putting a lot on here. I'm just putting a tiny bit on here. You could do this after you've sealed your piece. You could do this before you've sealed your piece. I don't see any reason why you can't do either. I have not sealed this piece. You just saw me paint it. But I will do this cutie little stencil on both sides. So now you can see that my stencil has been covered in Gold Digger. It's sitting on there. What I'm gonna do is peel it off. Ready? Once you peel it off, you're left with the most gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful, crisp, crisp stencil. Can you see how crisp that is? Look at how clean and crisp this is. It is so good. It is such a pretty, pretty stencil. Okay, so now let's do, well, this stencil is still wet. You can either wash it and reuse it right away or on the weekend, I used it on the same piece, four corners, and it was completely fine. So let's see, can you see? Yep, you can see. So I'm gonna take the same stencil and I'm gonna put it back over here because I wanna do the same thing to both sides, okay? Remember, it's sticky on the back. Now what I did the other day was, because there's Gold Digger on here, I just took a paper towel and gently pushed it down. This way it just sticks on all the edges. But ideally, you can wash in between uses and reuse. I just know that from doing this last weekend and playing with all these stencils and learning how to use them, I was able to reuse the same stencil on four corners without washing in between, and each corner was as crisp as the one before. I told you before that these stencils are available today on the Dixie Bell Paint page. If you click that little link above my head, they're listed under stencils. They're also listed under new releases and you're able to shop your little heart out. Shop, shop, shop. The value is amazing. Getting three of them in one package is really, really great. So there you go. I have added one tiny layer, Moonshine Metallics. I'm gonna peel this off. So crisp. You guys, how close can I bring it without my camera tipping over is the magical question. Maybe I can bring this closer to you. It is the crispest, cleanest lines that you're gonna get on a stencil. It makes your job super duper easy because normally stencils for me are always a little bit tricky and these ones are not. They are super easy, super user friendly. I'm gonna go wash this in warm soapy water and I'm gonna be able to use this again and again and again. So give them a, give them a check out. You gotta check out all the fun new things from Dixie Bell. And don't forget to check in with your new premier retailer to find out when they're gonna get that gorgeous gilding wax in because I know y'all want it. If you want it half as much as I want it, then you want it real bad because <laughs> I love some gilding wax. I am loving all of the shiny things. So that is it for me right now. Thank you for watching. I'll continue this cute little dresser. You can come over and follow me at the Top Drawer RVA and we will paint all of these things together. If I don't paint this on my page, I'll save it for next week and we'll finish it together. But today I used Would You Bends, cute little keyholes. We stuck them up there on the piece. I believe it was 990 Would You Bend keyholes. We started at the base with espresso gel stain. Then we came into Gravel Road, a little bit of vintage duck egg, some Savannah Mist. I did some Gold Digger as well as the new gemstone mousse. And I conditioned my wheels with Big Mama's Butter because these old wheels, these old wood wheels needed some love. Um, and they are going to be working in good condition now that they are conditioned 
and ready to go for the next 100 years. So thanks for watching today. I hope you all learned something. I hope you had fun. If I missed any questions, because I talk too much, obviously, I'm happy to answer um, any of your questions. You can always send me a message or I will come back through and watch and then answer them there. So don't forget to check it out today. New silk screen, silk screen stencils, say that 10 times fast, from Dixie Bell, all available now on their webpage. Go shopping. I will check in with you next week at three. Take care, everybody. Bye.